Remember how I cut a giant hole in my dining room floor because of termite damage? And then how I replaced all of the joists underneath it? Yeah, well today we are doing the last step of that, which is replacing the wooden flooring on top of it, covering all the beautiful work we've already done. I picked up some three quarter inch hardwood flooring that matches what's in the house, and I got myself a pneumatic nail gun for this flooring. We'll see if we can get this done nice and fast and finally close this chapter of the renovation. Now I'm gonna go in and get dressed. We'll get started. Since we're connecting our new flooring to old existing flooring, we want to feather the ends of our boards out. I'm going to remove what's left of the cutoff ends of the board from where I needed to create the patch for the subfloor. If you have to remove a piece of flooring that is sandwiched between two existing pieces that you don't want to remove, cut a strip out of the middle and then you can collapse the board in on itself. Remove any dust and chips from the grooves of the board so that we can get a seamless transition. I sanded my plywood edge down a hair just so that it was completely flush with the existing wood and then covered it with tar paper. If you're using 15 pound tar paper like I am here, which is a bit thinner, you can lay the two layers of old and new on top of each other. If you're using a heavier weight, like 30 pound tar paper, then you need to butt the edges up next to each other instead of laying them one on top of the other. I installed my first few pieces of flooring extremely slowly just so I could understand how the tool worked and make sure that my gaps were closed up nicely. I am not a fast worker, but I will kill myself trying to get the quality that I'm looking for. I've seen people who really lay these things down in a matter of minutes, and that's just not the way I operate, I guess. For the style of flooring, I put my nails in about every six inches. If I couldn't get all the way down a piece because an adjacent piece of flooring was blocking it, then I put in surface nails, such as brads or finish nails, and then covered them in with wood putty. One thing that I ran into, and you might as well, is the spacing on old flooring might be different than what you can do with the new flooring. I could put my new flooring in much tighter than the existing flooring actually was, and that sort of started throwing my lines off as I got further and further down and closer to the wall. I'm not sure how a professional would fix that problem, but what I did was manipulate the existing flooring in and actually re-nail the ends of it to be closer to the new flooring spacing. And I'm not going to lie to you, there were a few gaps that were larger than others because of me doing this. It's quite difficult to get absolute consistency when you're working with new flooring versus flooring that was installed over 70 years ago. And while that may be the case, it is still the best looking spot of flooring in the entire house. Because this flooring has been refinished before, there were some spaces that were filled with wood filler. There's nothing wrong with that and I'll be coming back and putting some in myself. But because I was trying to make these boards line up, I removed as much of the wood filler as I could to re-pressure the boards together to get a nice clean seam. Once I got all the way to the wall, it was time to cut the little half strip piece that was going to be my edge. I cut these boards 1 8 of an inch narrower than I actually needed to account for expansion. The piece I was currently replacing on the edge was about 10 feet longer down the room than I wanted to replace. So I cut out a piece of it with the oscillating saw and just made a butt joint with those last two pieces of flooring. It's not going to cause any problems because it's on the edge. I just threw a couple extra nails in it to make sure that they both stayed down. You're going to notice that the way you work has to change the closer you get to the wall. When you're down to the last three or four boards, the pneumatic hammer isn't going to fit on the edges anymore because the wall is going to be in the way. Closing your seams is going to be a little bit harder and you're going to have to find another way to fasten down your pieces. In my case, I used a combination of screwdrivers and nail bars to pry the flooring together while I hit it with a finish nailer. This kind of felt wrong because I knew it wasn't the right type of nail, but it did hold everything in place long enough for me to come back with a heavier gauge nail to secure the round. While this method did work and I've had absolutely no problems with it, I would like to hear in the comments if anybody knows how to properly finish around the edge of a room. I'm quite curious and I found so many different answers. If there's anyone in the industry, please let me know. Here you can see I did come back with those thicker finish nails and I tried to put them in at an angle to make sure that they held tight. It's quite hard to get an angle on a strip this small, but I did my best. To not mar the wood and get a nice finish, I came back with a nail set to sink all the heads of my nails. And that was it. Getting this patch of flooring done was the easiest step in a long list of difficult tasks to repairing this section of the house. I'm glad we finally got it done. When I bought this house, I knew that that spot was going to be one of the hardest places for me to repair in the entire project. But I had no idea what all it was going to entail. Now the exciting thing is that once I replace just a few more pieces of flooring, we're ready to refinish the floors throughout the entire house. 
house. If you want to see the steps I took to get ready for this part of the process, I'll put the video right up there. Until then, thanks for watching. See you next time.